So we're halfway done. You need at least the number of colors. If t is the number of colors, 2 to the t has to be greater than or equal to n. Now, to complete the explanation, we have to show that if t satisfies that inequality, then you can color it with t colors. For example, if n is 57, if n is 57, and this is just for instance, what's the smallest t so that 2 to the t is at least 57? Six, not five, six. Six. Is that clear? So the smallest t is t equals six. Two to the six is 64. Two to the five is only 32. Now, here's what I want you to do. Which you're going to explain. You're not actually going to do. I want you to take the shift graph with n being 57. 1, 2, up to 57. And now explain how to color the shift graph S57 with six colors. How many vertices are there? There are 57 choose 2 vertices. 57 times 56 over 1 times 2. Oh, that's a lot of vertices. So I don't want you to actually do the coloring. I want you to give a method by which you could then tell a UGA student to do the coloring for you. But you have to be prescriptive in how you do that. They're not too bright. All right, take a minute and see if you can explain how to color the shift graph S57 with six colors. If you sort of know how to do this, just keep thinking about it or write in your notes how to do it. But again, if you're a little lost, let's do it together. We just asked this question. I'll ask it again. How many subsets are there of the integers 1 through 6? 6? 64. Let's write them down in the order of smallest to biggest. So empty, singleton 1, singleton 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now write the doubletons. I don't care what order you write them in. 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, da, 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 1, 6, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, OK, then write the triples. Then write the fours. Write one set under each number. I got enough sets, don't I? I got only 57 numbers, but I got 64 sets. I won't use them all. But just put a set under each number, and keep your bigger sets to the right and smaller sets to the left. And among the sets of the same size, I don't care what the order is. Is it clear that you can do that? You can, a UGA student could do that, right? You could say, look, you've taken discrete math. You can write down all 64 subsets of the integers 1 to 6. You can, write, you can tell which ones are bigger. Write, write them down in order from smallest to the biggest. And then put, put those sets down. All right. Now, suppose that task has been done. How do you color? You undo the explanation for the first part of the proof. I need to decide a color 
on that vertex. How do I do it? I have a set here, and I have a set here. What do I know about set S and set T? They're distinct. I know that, but I know something a little more. I know that this one is at least as big as that one. So, there is a color that belongs to T, but not to S. Pick one and put it right there. Even a UGA student could do that. Here you are on an integer, and you're moving that direction. This has got set S on it. Read the numbers. Here is an integer, and it's got a set T on it. It's got some numbers in it. Look at this set, and look at that set. Pick one that's in here that's not in there, and that goes on this vertex. The UGA student says, how do I make the choice? There's lots. Pick the first one. Pick the least one. Now it's prescriptive. They can't, now they, oh, oh. I look at, is one in here and not in there? If it's one, then I put one. Is two in here? And I, if, then it's two. Pick the least one. Absolutely prescriptive. There is one. The fact that you did it from little to big means even when they have the same size, there's one in the second one that's not in the first. If, if this one is bigger, that's easy. But when it has the same size, it's... But you, you can't put the little ones over there and the big ones over here. Then what we're doing doesn't work. You've got to keep little, big, when you're going in that direction. Okay, now, that, that was a method. Does it work? Does it work? Can it ever be the case that using the method that we have just described, that... We go wrong, and we put alpha here, and we also put alpha here. Can this happen? Well, if it does, we have three sets. We have a set S1, we have a set S2, and we have a set S3. Those sets are distinct. But we put alpha here. That says alpha belongs to S3, but it does not belong to S2. We put alpha here. What does that mean? Alpha belongs to S2, but not to S1. Now look at that statement and that statement. How can they both be true? How can you not be in S2 and be in S2? Contradiction. The coloring is a good coloring. Let's notice this interesting subtlety. The growth rate for the shift graphs is almost exactly the same as for the Michelsky graph. In order to get a color chromatic number of around T, you need n to be like 2 to the t. Okay, well, if it's 2 to the t, you got, you got n choose 2 vertices. And 2 to the t times 2 to the t minus 1 over 2 is 2 to the t, t, is 2t. It's okay, but that's still about, about like doubling. It's exponential growth. Whereas the first one is off the charts. 